Welcome to this episode of Two Diet Teachers. Teachers. I'm Vene and this is Rumi. And we're back to have another brief discussion about something that is going on in education right now. And that thing is blended learning. <laughs> blended learning. I don't know about your district or the state that you're in, but ours is making a huge push towards everybody participating in every building in some type of blended learning in some shape, form, or fashion. We are expected to be te technologically savvy and involved. So we want to have a discussion today about what is blended learning? Um, how is it used in the classroom? Do we like it? What? And those, all those kind of things. I love it. I am big supporter of the idea that we have to use and catch up with the technology. My thing is how much. Okay. So I guess before we get into that, let's talk about what blended learning actually is because I think that's part of the problem that we as teachers have with being pushed into it. We don't really understand what it is. So I, one definition that I found said that it's an integration of technology with traditional face-to-face -face class activities in planned, pedagogically valuable manner. In other words, is learning that combines face-to-face -face and technology-driven experiences. Um, so how do you feel about that? As I said, I think it's uh, something that, first of all, we have to accept we live in technology technology area uh, area oh sorry <laughs> uh, technology era our kids know more about technology than we do now as a professional that uses technology a lot i am actually on the side that yes it can be used very productively in the classroom and i'm not talking about just putting the kids in front of some program but use the technology in your classroom as your helper and as a kids to express themselves. The, my reserves have always been that a program cannot take my place. So I will be the teacher, I will use the technology, but not a program taking my place. I agree. So coming from not having any technology in the classroom mm -hmm. and moving forward and watching how it's changed over the many years. I, being the age that I am, understand that, like she said earlier, we have to change with uh, society. We have to change with what's going on in the world. And the world now is the world of technology. So my um, opinion about it has always been if this is the way of the world and this is what we expect for our children to be successful in, mm -hmm. then I have to get on board with it. So I've never been one of those ones that uh, strayed away from having technology, especially if the district made a concerted effort to get the technology in our classrooms mm -hmm. for us to use and they bought software and they bought programs and they gave us access to it. I always felt like then if they did this, then I need to make it available for the students. I see many teachers, especially at a, of a certain age, mine, who fight against the technology. And it's simply because we're not comfortable with that medium mm -hmm. because it was not a medium that, you know, we were taught on and we had to use. Now we're being forced to do that. I was surprised at how many people, again, my age, don't know anything about using a computer. They don't have emails and that kind of thing. And it blows my mind that, you know, you are trying to function in today's world and you have no form of technology in your life. I'm not saying that you have to, but again, since this is how the world runs, you know, you want to be aware. I just want to be aware. I saw a situation today, and I'm going way off topic, but I saw a situation today 
when I actually went in the bank, went in the bank, that's something different. I went in the bank and there was a, a lady who looked to be in my age range. Um, she was setting up an account, a bank account, and they were asking her for her email and so forth and so on. And she was just so frustrated because first she was saying she didn't have one. And then she said, yes, I have one, but I don't remember it. And they gave her the little tablet so she could put her information in. And she was very, very like apprehensive about pushing any buttons or typing in anything. And I just don't want to be in that situation. Mm -hmm. So I know that was a side note, but I just needed to throw it in because it happened today. So getting back to our blended learning in the classroom thing. Um, blended learning, comes in many different forms. So I think as teachers, one thing that we have to understand is there's no one right way. And I think that's the thing that scares us to most yes. because it doesn't, my classroom doesn't have to look anything no. like her classroom, but we can still be falling well, under that blended learning yes. model. So for me, for example, uh, the a year and a half ago, before me getting out of the classroom, I used the flipped classroom. So I will have my videos or videos that I found and I thought that it's good for in a program that my kids were using. So by the time that they came to me the next day, they already had an idea what the mm -hmm. topic is going to be. And I had more time to go around on the stations or small groups or whatever we were planning on that day. This year, um, majority of the homework is done on a program that I'm like, so it depends on how you're trying to integrate that. I, my case, I was catching up with the kids. So <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. And one thing I think is really important, especially when you go back and think about the definition that I read earlier, mm -hmm. it's got to have a point. So yes. she already mentioned it can't be because the district gave you seven laptops or something in your classroom that you find time to put some students on just like games or something like mm -hmm. that. It needs to have a purpose. And if it doesn't have a purpose and the kids are not mm -hmm. actually learning something mm -hmm. from it, because if it's taking kind of the place of a face-to-face -face interaction, they need to learn something from it. So if they're, if it's something that's not going to actually teach them something they're gonna gain some information from, I don't think that really no. fits under blended learning. That no. fits under your kids are on the computer. Yes, that's what that you, they're feeling And tired. I think a lot of teachers <laughs> think, oh, well, I just put them on there and let them play cool math or you know something like that. They feel like, I blend it. I, yeah, I agree with you and I have to kind of um, get on uh, on that point because that's a very interesting point. So for example, this kind of uh, program, School Math, um, which I think through math, something like this, it, it ha for me does not count because I don't have an access to it. Mm -hmm. I don't control what they're seeing. I don't control what the mm -hmm. program is sending them. So those do not qualify to me as a blended learning and as a part of my technology learning. For me, the only way that it will be sheltered under that umbrella is if it's a program that I can input something specific so the kids can see it or a program that I can use to communicate with the kids and the kids will have projects to send to me. So that is kind of where I am going right now. Now, mind you, not to be savvy technology person, I just learn with like everybody else. I was just catching up with my students. But it's just a program because they have to be 20 minutes on a computer does not right. qualify to, for me. Right. Just doing a little research about blended learning, when I looked to see what it all entails, there were several different mm -hmm. models that you can find that fall under the blended learning umbrella, which I didn't know. I, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you flat out I didn't know. And just to name a few, station rotation, 
which we're all probably very familiar no with sta the station rotation kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, lab rotation, and this would be where you have a computer lab mm -hmm. that students rotate through. Individual rotation, this is like an individual program, it's individualized per student. So what mm -hmm. this student does on a computer is maybe totally different from what this student does. And then as Rumi talked about, and I've seen in actuality a flipped classroom the flipped classroom that I had the privilege of seeing uh, in my building, the teacher filmed all of her lessons. It was the student's responsibility to go home and watch the lessons. Mm -hmm. And she included, uh, she embedded questions within the recording that they had to answer as they watched the lesson. And then when they came to school the next day, they did class rotations, one which was to her and her station uh, immediately or talked about whatever it was that they saw on the, the video so that she could see that they learned the information or not. Mm -hmm. And it was really, it was really interesting. And I thought the kids were very engaged because it was always, they were always moving. It was always something different. Uh, I also saw that there was something called a la carte. There's a, a way called flex. There's something called extended virtue. And from reading, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. And on which is why I say your classroom doesn't have to look like my classroom. It can be as simple as me putting an assignment inside of a Google Classroom. Yes. That they yes. just have to go onto the computer yes. and do it on their own, at their own speed, and just follow mm -hmm. my directions and put the finished product on there and I can get it off of the Google Classroom. Or it can be as elaborate as having like the whole flip classroom type situation or a lab rotation kind of situation. Mm -hmm. So don't let the title scare yeah. you and make mm -hmm. you think that if you're not a techie person, you can't get this done. I know most schools are either um, having the iPads or, or the Chromebooks. Mm -hmm. Chromebooks lend themselves perfectly to anything Google. Yes. So I know for our district, you can become Google certified. If you're on the Twitterverse at all, following any kind of education, anything, there are tons of people that you can connect with. And this is not to me trying to tell you to get on Twitter, but there are tons of people on Twitter who you can connect with that can help you to get certified mm -hmm. in Google if you want to go that far. I'm not saying you have to, no. but the basics of Google, if you have a Gmail, you have that already on your home computer. Yes. And you should just use it. Link all this stuff yes. together. Because the more I use it, the more comfortable right. I get, mm -hmm. the more I see that it's not that hard. No. And if you already have a district email, mm -hmm. it's already included in your package that comes with the apps, mm -hmm. extensions, Google extensions. So it's right there. And like we said in the beginning, it just, you have to put just the thought why I'm using that technology. That's it. Yeah. It doesn't say specifically what kind of technology, how to be used, how often it should be used, how rigorous it has to be every day. It's a video from me. And a, it does not specify that thing. Now. I can almost hear everybody yelling, but uh, my kids don't have. Granted, I have always taught in Title I schools, and majority of the kids will depend on the time that the parents have to put them on a um, internet connection, or maybe they don't even have the means. Mm -hmm. In this case, what we talk and what it's worked around the world right now is what's called in-class flip classroom, in-school flip classroom, where the kids come first, they get to the presentation first on the school computers, and then they come to the learning table. So it's not that scary. It, it really is not that scary. I had to research programs that served to me mm -hmm. because I was just like the oh, Google Classroom, mm -hmm. you know, it's like so bad. So I had to find something that is very familiar for everybody. And there's a lot, a lot going on over there. And the other part is 
it's interesting for the kids. Mm -hmm. And with time, it gets very interesting for the teacher too, because you, you kind of start thinking, okay, so what else I can put over there? What's the quality of what I'm putting over there? And is it accessible for everybody to understand that? Plus the differentiation, it's like this. Right. <laughs> you can do it immediately. Yeah, yeah, and I think of the, the good thing that you talk about, along with it being individual, it lends itself to different modalities. You, mm -hmm. We all know that children learn in different modalities, and we all know that children learn at different speeds. And this is one of those perfect mm -hmm. opportunities for you to give those kids who you know take longer or maybe they go faster. Mm -hmm. This is a perfect opportunity for you to get them off your back. Because you know you have those kids. I'm done. I'm done. Yes. I'm done. Or you have that kid, you're, you're constantly saying, let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, this kid can go at his tempo, and this kid can go at that tempo. And the ones that go speedy, they can just go on to the next assignment, go yes. on to the next thing, go on to the next thing. Now, hold up, wait a minute, let's just go ahead and put some truth to it. Okay. It does take planning. It does. Let's not be naive and think mm -hmm. this doesn't take planning. If you do small groups at all, you know that that takes planning. If you do any kind of rotations that your students have to rotate through, you know that takes planning. This is no different. It will take planning. If you're gonna do a Google Classroom, not only does it take planning, but you actually have to put it together. You have to set it up. You have to get all those things together. Another thing that she talked about is about children not having um, access. Now, one thing that we do at our school, and we're a Title I school also, we do have laptop checkout where mm -hmm. kids have, are able to get a laptop, check it out for the weekend so that over the weekend they still can stay connected. Now, again, I know we can't control whether they have Wi-Fi at their homes or anything like that, but for those kids that want to have access to the laptop so that they can do some of the things that we're asking them to do mm -hmm. online, um, they can do that. Uh, other things that we do, we have the bring your own device day. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a laptop. Some of these things they can do on the phone. If your kids are like mine, Title One or not, everybody has a phone. So some of these things they can do just right on their phone. Now I know mm -hmm. data and minutes, depending upon how they're paying mm -hmm. for it, may be an issue. But that's something that you have to hash out with parents at the beginning of the year if you really want your kids to be into it. And I really like her idea of having the flipped class in the class where mm -hmm. they are able to do the technology piece in the classroom and then go on to the teacher part of it. I think that's a really good thing. It's it, it just a matter of organizing your stations mm -hmm. and which station will be the one following your presentation and where you start at. It just literally matter of organizing. Right. I wanna kind of tap on what we were talking about Title I schools. In my case, my district does not provide uh, the signing laptops. So that actually forced me to look for programs that I can use that can be actually apps mm -hmm. because when you do through app the data it's not that affected don't get me wrong it will eventually affect your data but it's not as you can go to the web page on the phone and then it affects more now the other thing that I looked at was I needed to invite the parents to see what we're doing so they can be convinced that what we're doing, it's not just a game, it's not just something crazy. So I look for app, apps and programs that they have a parent's portal so they can come in and connect to the, to the classrooms that we're having. And that kind of opened the parents to, okay, I know my kid is in the phone and I know what it's doing because it's specifically led by the teacher. Mm -hmm. It's something that the teacher wants them to do. And in the beginning, I had the family challenges that were very That's fun. Very so fun. they kind of got on that one. I think it's possible. I think it's achievable. Um, 
I enjoy it and I will agree, it needs planning and it needs time to be set up because yeah. you have to do it plus you have to put the kids in. The kids will have to sign in. And so don't pressure yourself, just go step by step. There is a lot of programs over there. Some of them are very easy to yes. use. Yes. They literally mimic Facebook for all that matters, yes. you know. I know the first time I learned, I think it was then, it was called Nearpod mm -hmm. or something, and it's changed over to something else now. But the first time I saw it, I thought, oh my God, I'd never be able to do that. And so what I chose to do is every time they present one of these new apps or websites or something for us to try in our classroom, I would go in and set it up for me, mm -hmm. I would be my own student and so forth and yes. so on. I'd be the teacher and the student. I would set it up for me and I would play with it mm -hmm. so that I could acclimate myself to it. Because you know, you go to these trainings and you see all this stuff and oh wow, woo woo, it's great. And then you don't get do anything lost. with it. Right? <laughs> so I would always go and set it up and do it and put something in there and make myself learn how do you in Put up a video and I can embed questions in it. I can mm -hmm. have the students come in and answer the questions. And I would have my uh, co workers be my students and I'd send it out to them and say, answer these questions and mm -hmm. send it so I can see how everything works. This is one way that you can find, like she said, some of those really good programs. Now, all of them are not going to be that great. Mm -hmm. You know, some of these companies are just trying to capitalize and that's it. Some of them are really good, but you do have to do the research. You do have to yes. research it. Our district also has a set of online things that they want the students to mm -hmm. participate in. So you don't even have to look those up. The district bought them, the district paid for them, incorporate them. They're spending our tax money on them. I guess I'm throwing my own personality in there right now. No, no. They're that, spending our tax true. money on them. We may as well use them. And I don't know about your district, but our district, as far as high school, and I think it's trickling down, um, most of the textbooks are now online. online. Yes. So we have to get on board with that. And like she said, it's not a, you don't have to be 100% engaged in technology every single day of the school year, nope. but we do have to get it in there at some point. And there's something interesting that happens once you assume the position of this is just a machine. Mm -hmm. It's not going to bite me. Mm -hmm. it, it, you can do pretty much uh, a lot of stuff without breaking anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not that much of a thing. And then when you realize that Google is actually made for people that don't know how to navigate mm -hmm. the internet and what to do with that and then you come to peace with that part you kind of start enjoying it and then you kind of start looking for different things too to to go around and figure out and with me because we didn't have those uh technology programs that the, the district offered i had to look for something mm -hmm. that i will, will uh, use with my kids but it was fun because you try everything. Exactly. You're looking at everything, you're trying everything. And then on the run, you kind of learn about other programs and other things that as a teacher you can use that make your life yeah. easier and yeah. you kind of not like it. We, as in my district right now, we have programs that have helped the teachers and the students. And yes, it's going online. I think that there is no getting out of it. I it's agree. just make your peace and go forward with it. So if you need help um, trying to find some applications or some online sites that you think are worthwhile, again, I'm not pushing you onto Twitter, but I'm just mm -hmm. telling you flat out, because I was against Twitter for a long time. But again, we're in a district that pushes Twitter. You can find any group of people that can help you in just about anything education yes. wise on Twitter. So if you get on Twitter and you search blended you blended learning, I'm sure there's a group out there. I'm pretty 100% positive you could find a blended learning group that will give you suggestions of things to try. 
Uh, there's Google groups out there that give you suggestions of things to try as far as classrooms go. Even if you're stuck on Facebook, search out some yes. educational groups that you can get into that give out information. That stuff is invaluable. Now, trust me when I tell you, I was not for all of that as far as my job is concerned. But I have found some really good mm -hmm. ideas. I mean, it's like Pinterest. It's just a different kind of form. Even go on Pinterest, you might be able to find it on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. But there are myriads of different places that you can go in these different mediums that will help you to find some of these um, things that you need to make your blended learning experience successful. So let's talk about a little bit about the pros and cons of blended learning. So let's start with some pros. Um, and I'm just going to read this right off my screen. I got this from digitalchalk.com. If you've never looked at that website, it's a blog. Check it out. Um, you might even find some stuff there. A lot. A lot on that blog. <laughs> so some pros that they uh, are speaking about. Collaborative learning experiences. Mm -hmm. you, it, it just work just comes out it just it's gonna happen if you have really good programming set up you're gonna have good discussion yes you're gonna have good discussion another one is increased accessibility which they say improves access as well as student attitudes towards learning yes. um you know if it's in a format that i like of course i'm gonna want to do it yes and and let's just face it Everybody is not a open up a crack, crack a book open and let's read it kind of thing. Everybody is not a sit and let me lecture you kind of thing. So better accessibility to education, better communication. Communication is improved between lectures and part-time full students and all of those things. So I might have missed it and zoned out because you were just talking at me, blah, 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 mm -hmm. like the Charlie Brown teacher. But I might pick up on that information yes. that I may have missed through my blended learning experience and successful evaluations. Because again, if I like it, I'm gonna perform better and I'm gonna do better on my evaluations just because it's a form that I happen to like. Anyone engaging. Definitely. Very engaging. engaging for the kids, very engaging for parents in some point, if you choose to integrate them in the community online that you have. The other thing that it's a very big benefit for those learners that they need a little bit more time or they need that repeated thing, you have the video there, they just have to go back and forward or just pause, whatever it is. So it gives them the next, their own time to do the learning. Um, makes it interesting mm -hmm. and um, I think the other big prop in the in this thing is that makes it timeless. Because in some point, and I know it happened to me, and when I say timeless, probably in some point we're going to have, you know, just screens that we don't see and just do like this. Um, but once you have this video, it's right there in your library. Right. You can use it uh, forward you can go back to it next year if it's necessary sure. and, you know so you put the word but then you have it it's there and it can be used multiple times that's true that's true all right so let's look at some cons we've mm -hmm. spoken about some of them already uh, strong technological dependence meaning the stuff has to be there and it has to be reliable. So don't give me some 1999 computers and expect me to run my class successfully with blended learning. So if I'm expected to do this, my technology has to be up to par in order to handle it. And I know that's probably some of our biggest issues yes. <laughs> across any district, unless you happen to be somebody that has gotten a grant or they have a lot of money. For example, at our school, in our district, we have seven Chromebooks per classroom. The teacher has one and then there's seven for the students. We also have like uh, a cart of iPads and I think Kindles per grade level. So if I have 25 kids in a class, 
you know, and we have to go back and forth with the sharing of different classrooms and that kind of thing. So there's never a situation where we can have the whole class having its own device at one time unless we have them bring their own devices in. How about in your district? Well, same thing. We're not one-on-one -on -one district, so we kind of struggle with the same thing. So it will be a matter of organizing and working with your team mm -hmm. to, to see which day you can have the whole group or which day just a station part. But the other thing, and probably it happens to majority of us, um, it's put over there, we have to use it, we encourage to use it, very much encouraged. And then you go to school and the district blocks sites. So whatever you did and you plan, it's not accessible yeah. for the kids. Sometimes it's accessible for the teacher, so the teacher thinks it's it can mm -hmm. be done, but the kids I mean and they cannot right. see anything of what she did. So you have to check that part. Yeah, and that's part of your plan and you definitely have to do that. Mm -hmm. Now she can tell you from even in my class when I decided to use there were many days that we decided, okay, today we're gonna use the laptops and then the kids walk in and we think everything is set and then like she said, they sign on and then it's like a whole and different what? party happening right in front of your face. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a plan B, C, D, mm -hmm. and the E, all right? So that's definitely a thing and that's all part of your planning. So even for the ones that plan the best, these situations can happen. Mm -hmm. So another con is lack of IT knowledge. So if you don't specifically have a person in your building that that's all that they do, some schools are lucky enough to have a technology person and that's all they do on the campus is go from class to class, making sure all your mm -hmm. technology works. I don't happen to be in one of those campuses. Mm -hmm. So that means me as the teacher has to have a little bit of IT knowledge. If you lack any IT knowledge, I'm, and let me just backtrack and say, I'm like Ruby said earlier, I will pull out cords and stick them back in. I will jiggle knobs. I will push buttons until something pops up and something happens. Mm -hmm. I, because to me, it's a machine and it can't get me back or anything like that. So I don't care. I'm just going to do this. And sometimes stuff works and sometimes it doesn't. But if you know that you are on the limb about whether or not you want to fool with technology like that, that could be a con that would cause people not to want to do it because I'm afraid something's not going to work. And many times, especially today, being a fifth grade teacher or fourth graders, I'll just say, hey, this is not working. Come there you go, it. that's and your the kids person. can come up here and <laughs> push some buttons and do whatever or tell you what to do. And they'll fix it on their own. So there are ways around that. And another con that I see um, or that they listed was students can fall behind. And that's simply because if you have to put parameters on it. Mm -hmm. They have to be accountable. So yes, I know it's recorded and you can go watch this recording anytime you want to, but just like anything else, it has a due date. It has an mm -hmm. expiration date. After this date, this has to be done. And if it isn't, it's gonna be mm -hmm. the same thing that you would do if it was pencil and paper. It, same thing. Same thing. It kind of going on that same uh, point, it, you have to have some kind of check for whatever you're putting online. Either they're going to message you using the program or they're filling a Google form where they're answering the uh, uh, questions. You have to see that it's done and it's done on the correct timeline to be done. The lack of technology, so I'm going to tell you my secret because I'm in the same age group and I did not know a lot of things, you know. I remember I started with a flippy block, so <laughs> that, that, that bad. My source for knowledge when the IT person is not there, it's YouTube. Mm -hmm. Just go to YouTube and put it there. You will have a list of videos that people actually do and it's step by step by step what you have to do, even for specific programs. So that, I think it's an easier way to approach of, I don't know what to do. Okay, let me see what people are doing. Let me see another one and then maybe I'll try to. Yeah. It happened to me personally, it happened to me. I agree. Yeah, or if you have a 
son or daughter, younger generation, you just yeah. yell. Just that will yeah. happen. Just use them. Yes. Yes. So as far as blended learning goes, I think it's a, a good thing. I yes. think we just have to, you know, face it that this is the time we live in. Now we have children who come to school having never held mm -hmm. a book in their hand, mm -hmm. but they can they can work a tablet, they can scroll, mm -hmm. they can scroll, which I think is the weirdest thing ever. But this is where we are. Mm -hmm. This is it. So you know, how many times have you been out in public and you see a baby in a stroller with a phone in their hand? Mm -hmm. or some kind of little tablet or something and they're just as content as they can be um, and it's a problem for us <laughs> not for them so we do have to engage in that however we have to be strategic about it because it's not necessarily a just about them having fun mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily about we have to do this because this is what they have been wired for mm -hmm. We still want to plan it so that something is being gathered from that. Yes. So if you don't plan out your blended learning, it's just going to be a kid on a computer. Yes. Something and there is a lot of programs, free yeah. programs that you can just put them on that. Yeah, yeah. And it's not, it's not what it is. And please don't use blended learning as a way to not teach. Because oh, no. at the end of the day, you still are the teacher and you, stuff has to be said and information has to be given from by you. I think one of the most important parts is how much time should be in blended learning, how much time should be on a program on a computer, and the other part is for what I'm using it. Mm -hmm. It's not, I'm not using this program, this computer, this whatever it is, to just show the data and for me to show that I have this back uh, backup in case of something happens, it has to be strategic. strategic. I'm using it specifically for this one point. I'm using it because I want them really to see how planets look from out space. You know, I don't want just to tell them, and I don't want to use the cookies. I want a video, or I want pictures from the. Oh, mm -hmm. So it's like, that's why I'm using it, but I'm not using it for them to stay the whole day on that computer and mm -hmm. just do whatever. It's a strategic use. It's a, it's the time that you're going to put the kids on. I think it's a very, very important part. Right. It cannot be some kind of um, task that will take the whole day. Or the, no, that's not the point. This is actually, and I, I like to say that to the teachers that I'm talking to, specifically in my in my campuses, this is a tool. Exactly. It's just a tool. Exactly. It's not going to work without you, and you decide how much you're going to use it. Yes. So I think what we want to say in a nice little nutshell is mm -hmm. when you're using blended learning, you have to be intentional about it. So that means you have to plan, you have to prepare, and you have to find the right, the right. things to use mm -hmm. in this blended learning so that it can be successful. It does not take the place of you actually yeah. teaching your students. It should work hand in hand mm -hmm. with you teaching your students. So that's it. That's all I have to say about blended learning. So again, we always ask that if you have any comments, you have anything you want to say, Go ahead and put those in the comments. So I want to spend the last couple of minutes talking about, we always do a what's happening now kind of section. And this is a little different. Um, I was reading and just ran up on this. This is one of those, uh, another sites that I follow on Instagram or Twitter or somebody. Mm -hmm. And it's called weareteachers.com. So it's called mm -hmm. weareteachers. And they had an article about teachers taking mental health days. And the title of the article, excuse me, article is, Should Teachers Take Mental Health Days? Yes. <laughs> Especially after testing. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> and I thought this was interesting that the question even needs to be asked. Now, listen Why is to, it the let, question? Me just, let me just, just say this clearly because some teachers pride themselves on never missing a day. 
I get it. Mm -hmm. I get it. I really, really get it because I used to be that teacher. And the older I got, the less, you know, that mattered to me because my body said, you're going to take a day off. Yeah. I feel like we have so many teachers now who are having to deal with so much rather than just walk into my classroom and teach. Mm -hmm. All of the traumatic things that our students bring to us, we have to deal with. The majority of our teachers in the country, in this country, the United States of America, most of the teachers that are teaching right now are not in schools where they don't have to deal with any type of situations. I would gather, I would go out of the limb and say most of the teachers are teaching in some challenging yes. schools. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I don't have any so. percentages for that, so you no. know, don't quote me and say that I said that. But. Specifically, if you are in the public school the public system, system, exactly, and I'm speaking specifically you're to doing, the public school. You're dealing with that almost every day. You, you're dealing with it. You are having to deal with students coming to your classrooms with many different situations, mm -hmm. and you're to corral them, you're to keep them calm, and you're to impart information to them. That is exhausting. Yes. Both of us have taught in situations where we've had what would be uh, coined as the worst of the worst. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and in, in, for, in types of students. We've, we've had some really rough students mm -hmm. and we've had to deal with them. And fortunately, and I say that loosely, fortunately, we're both those kind of educators that deal with those kinds of things. We try to keep it under control. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, when we go home, some days you've had enough. And with some of the stuff that kids are coming to school with now, and now we have to deal with uh, intruder drills and shooter yes. drills and all these different kinds of drills and it's scaring the kids, it's making us nervous and all these different things that we deal with. You might want to take a mental health day. The district says you have to have this done. Your principal says this. Your coach or specialist says this. And your husband says yes. this. And your kids need this. And then the kids in the class are all looking at you to do this. Mm -hmm. You might need to take a day. And it's okay. I understand why teachers don't like to because we often say, it's more trouble to make sub plans yes. than it is just to go home and be sick. But I would rather for you to go home and take a day to breathe than to have to go to the doctor and get pills for anxiety mm -hmm. or this or that. We shouldn't be pumped up with pills no. so that we can come in and function in our classroom. Tragically, Not saying no. that there's anything wrong with that if it happens to be your story. But feel free. To worry about self and take a day and you just don't know you don't need permission for anybody else but you exactly it's it just that easy you have to give yourself permission and say I need this day I need this day just because my body my mind, mind. can deal with it anymore I have had days where it's I need a day to just to recharge emotionally because the next day I have to face another group of kids that most probably didn't even have their breakfast at home. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's um, probably because we worked in a very challenging, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the schools, but it it's okay. It's and okay. you have to come to terms to that. It's that I don't need permission for anybody else. It's okay for me to have this one day. They will survive without you. The school will survive right. without they you. And it will help you to have that moment of, okay, it's peace. I need it for me so I can do more the next day. And, and, the, and the bottom line is we can't be productive if we're, yeah. if we're spazzed out. Yes. You can't be productive if you're spazzed out. So you have permission to care about yourself. Mm -hmm. Take some time, and I don't mean a week. 
I don't mean necessarily go jump on a cruise ship or anything like that. Hey. But I know. <laughs> but if you can take a day and just stay in your pajamas, maybe you might take this day and say, I'm going to stay home, but I'm going to take all these papers that mm -hmm. are stacked up on my desk and grade all these papers in peace while I drink my tea mm -hmm. or do listen to my music or whatever. But do feel free to please take care of yourself. We're in this to win it, but we want to make it to the end and we want to have some life after that. So this is my tip to you. Take a day. Take a day. Take a day. Take a day. Mm -hmm. And with that, we're about to take a day. So <laughs> yeah. we're signing out. Two tired teachers. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>